Hi, it's Matthew Reed here from How to Repair Pendulum Clocks, and today we're going to be talking about files for the clock maker. I've been wanting to make this video for some time now and didn't really know where to start. There's so much to say about files. But I got involved in a new making project, the companion video to this video, and I thought, what better place to start than where we are? So let's jump into it with the five files we used in video number 21. That is two hand files, one zero cut and one number two cut, a barrette file, a three square escapement file and a half round file. Now, in terms of the makes of the files I'm using here, they're all Swiss. There are, of course, many makes of file. The brands here are either Valorb or Beta. I've put a link to the Valorb catalogue in the description below because it's a really cool and extensive resource and it tells you about the cuts of files and the names of all the different kinds. So let's start with that question, which is your kind of go-to file? Well, these all are really, in a way, I suppose the kind of most common one where people begin is the hand file. So the hand file is just a kind of straightforward rectangular file and it's cut on three sides. The two flat sides, one cut edge and one safe edge. And we'll come back to talking about the safe edge a little bit later. But let's just look at the cut pattern first. All the files I'm using here today are double cut and if we look there's a primary cut which is at about 70 degrees from the edge of the file and then there's a secondary cut which is about 50 degrees from the edge of the file. This double cut system makes for smoother filing, prevents resonance so the teeth can't eat so easily fall into the gap that the previous one has made causing a resonance pattern. So most of the files we use are double cut files. You may have heard or seen that files are available in different coarsenesses. The system used in these files, Swiss files, is a numerical system and it's really only a guide. Again, in the Valorb catalog, they try and describe how many cuts or teeth per centimeter there are on each different file but it's not an absolute scale. A smaller file, for instance, in cut two, has got a different number of teeth per centimetre from a bigger file in cut two, if that makes sense. So just use that number system as a very broad guide. A number two file is what we would call a medium file, a number four file is fine, a number six file is very fine, zero is coarse, double zero is extra coarse, and so on. So we've got a system that runs from double zero, basically, that's the coarsest file that's commonly available, um, through to six, which is the finest file that's normally available. So our first file here is a number two cut Valorb file. It has a six inch blade. When you buy a file, the dimension given as the length is the length of the blade, not the overall length of the file, including the tang. Now, I talked in video 001 about file handles and how to fit those. So the golden rule here is never use a file with a tang that doesn't have a handle because it might result in personal injury and also a lack of control of the file. You can see here that this file has got three sides cut, one edge has got straight cuts on it, which isn't frankly particularly useful, and the other edge is a safe edge. Let's just talk quickly about the safe edge. You'll notice that four of the five files we're talking about today have got safe edges ground on them. As a broad rule, you don't really use a file as it comes from the manufacturer. Now the safe edge on this file isn't actually an edge as such, it's got a little bevel on it. Sometimes the teeth actually curl over slightly on the safe edge. So what you have to do is this to make it more useful. That's taken abrasive stone here. I'm using a 1000 grit ceramic stone. 
keeping the file dead square and flat, we're grinding away those manufacturing marks on the edge to really make that edge a safe edge. Here I'm just finishing it with a 6000 grit, I think it is, ceramic stone just to give it a polish, but again keeping the thing square. The second file we're looking at is very similar. You can see, by the way, that these files taper in thickness, so they're thicker near the tongue than they are at the end. It's always worth looking along the length of the file to see whether it's straight or not. Sometimes they distort during the hardening, quenching process. Now that curve or slightly convex surface is really useful to us when we want to file flat surfaces. We don't actually want the file to be dead flat. In fact, we hold the file in tension sometimes to actually increase that convex surface. We'll talk about that in another video. So like the first file we looked at, this one's double cut. The teeth are slightly coarser. This is a zero cut file. So really, these are your go-to files for getting started. If you were to ask me what files would I buy, then yeah, maybe three six inch hand files, one zero cut, one two cut, and one four cut, and they get you off the starting line. The next file we're going to look at is something a little bit more unusual. This is called a barrette file, and it's incredibly useful. In fact, that's why I'm slightly reluctant to say start with hand files. The problem with hand files is you can't really file into corners. It seems slightly counterintuitive because you would think that square corner would be useful, but it's actually not useful. If you imagine the filings or the swarf, they kind of get stuck in the corner. So this barrette file, which is actually relieved to be quite sharp in the corners, which again, you sharpen even more by stoning in exactly the same way we did with the hand file to really bring the edge of the teeth up to the edge of the file is brilliant for getting into corners. And I'm actually using all these files as flat files anyway. So the barrette file is something I'd strongly recommend you look at. This one again has a six inch blade and it is number two cut. Next, we're on to an escapement file. Now, many of you may be familiar with a needle file. A needle file and an escapement file are very similar. An escapement file is often used in watches, hence the name uh, relating to watch escapements. And if you're into fine finishing and new making of watches or other small components, then a set of escapement files are absolutely indispensable. This one is triangular in section, but it's called a three square file. Just one of those quirks, I suppose. So a triangular section file is actually called a three square file. And when we look at the edge here, you can see where two of the cut edges intersect. There's actually a little bevel, so the same applies. You can't file into a corner with this thing and get a nice sharp corner. So exactly the same thing. I've stoned off one set of teeth altogether. Don't use an offhand grinder, by the way, when removing teeth from files. There'll be too much temperature there, which uh, will draw the temper or anneal the teeth and ruin the file. So always use something that's relatively cool, like a diamond plate or the ceramic stone I'm using. The escapement file looks slightly different from a needle file. Escapement files have got square section handles and needle files have got round section handles. But like needle files, you don't put a handle on an escapement file, you use it as it is. Don't be tempted to kind of get one of those interchangeable pin vice things. I wouldn't go there personally. So that's a three square escapement file, which we use for beveling and fine finishing. A kind of rule of thumb though, if you're working on finer or smaller work, you might think you want a fine file. In fact, I would always use the biggest file you can get away with. It gives you much more control. What you tend to get with a small file is a heck of a lot of rather nicely finished undulations. So stick with big files if you can and only use small files where 
absolutely necessary. And the final file in our five file lineup is the Val Titan. Now Val Titan is a brand of Valorb and it's like a regular file but it's specifically made or finished to file difficult materials. In the companion video to this video I was filing an Allen key which had been sort of let down or annealed a bit but it was still really tough tool steel and the Val Titan was the tool for the job. Uh, the Val Titan highly recommended absolute legend. They make them in all kinds of sizes like the regular files but they're just particularly tough. This one's a half round file which again is slightly incidental because I wasn't using the back I was only using it as a flat file. Now there's a whole lot more to say about files. One common question is do you have different files for filing brass and filing steel? Well the answer is that some people do and in fact if you go to workshops you'll see files with yellow paint on the handles and if you pick up that file and you start filing a piece of steel then that person normally shrieks and says that's only for filing brass which is great I respect that but it's a bit of a faff and then of course you get something in horology where you've got a plate of brass with a steel clock pin driven into it and you kind of can't get round it. What I would say there is that if you're filing brass you need your files to be quite sharp, relatively new. If you're filing softer steels you will get away with a blunter file so people say break in new files on brass then move them to steel. Again to be honest if I want to file something I pick up the file and I file it and when the file's completely worn out don't throw it away, they're really good steel and you can use them for all sorts of other things but um, that kind of answers that question. Personally I don't have different files for steel and brass. Well a little bit of a whistle stop tour of an introduction to files for the clock maker there. If you like this, if you want more content about different kinds of files, how to use them, more on flattening out the edges or so on then let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you again.